Hi, thank you so much. This is Dalin Fee. Today's presentation, we are using integration, using partial fractions with linear factor. And this is part four of our presentations on integrating partial fraction. And so if you have not subscribed to this channel, we encourage you to please do subscribe because a lot of the videos are coming and if you are not a subscriber you are likely not to get notification so you wouldn't know the topics that you are looking for you wouldn't know so kindly press the subscription button now on today's presentation is to determine um to integrate partial fractions involving linear factor so the first one we have x plus 1 all over x squared minus 3x plus 12 dx and you can see that this is a linear factor and then here again you even though you see cubic function here but we can easily solve this by factorizing so stay tuned and see how easy it is but then you cannot solve this until you break them down into their basic components so that is what basically we are going to do and doing that it will make your work very easy so let's start the calculation okay so determine the integral of x plus 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx now first let's go by the rule you can see that the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator so once the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator it means you can go ahead and factorize the denominator now this is a quadratic um, expression so you can easily do so by using calculator so let's pull the calculator up and then let's use the calculator to factorize this how do we do that you simply press the mode and then you select equation that's five and then quadratic is option 3 so you press 3 and then let's now fix in the e so the e value is 1 so we press 1 and then you hit the equal sign button the b value is minus 3 so you press minus 3 and then you hit the equal sign button and then the c value is 2 so you press 2 you hit the equal sign button then you press the equal sign so it means first we are getting x is equal to 2 that's x1 and then the x2 is equal to um, 1 so notice that this is quadratic equation so if you want to convert the expression into equation that means if it was quadratic equation we would have taken the x is plus 2 and then the x min, um, pl plus 1 but because it is quadratic expression that means we are going to take this to be negative 2 and then take this one to be negative 1 so when you come to the expression that we are solving you see that when we factorize this into quadratic we are getting x minus 1 and then x minus 2 and so this is the breakdown for this um, denominator now that we are true with this we want to now express this into partial fraction so we can solve remember it is a linear factor so we'll give the first denominator um and we'll give it a numerator of a and then the second one will be given numerator of b then we will determine the a and b before we can now do the integration so with this the first one the first denominator x minus one that is so we give it a as its numerator so we have a over x minus one plus and then this one also take a numerator of b so b over x minus two so having said that then we are good to go now we want to now determine the values of a b and then um, a and b so how do we determine the a and b let me change the case quickly and then we can do so so with this we can now go ahead and then do that now to do it we are solving this so we have to find the lcm and the lcm for the left hand side is going to be x minus 1 times x minus 2 
so we multiply the whole of this by the lcm then we multiply this one too by the same lcm which is x minus one times x minus two then we also multiply this by the same lcm so simply put the lcm is going to come from the left hand side so the denominator for the denominator from the left hand side is going to be the lcm use it to multiply this to multiply this one and then to also multiply this one so let's see now when we multiply x plus one over x minus one times x minus two that is this when we multiply this by this lcm naturally you can see that the, the, the whole of this will cancel the whole of this that's why i have the red line there meaning the red one is canceling the red one so here we are left with x plus one that's how we have x plus one here then we multiply this same thing here by the same lcm so x minus one times x minus two when it is used to multiply e over um x minus one you can see that the x minus one will actually cancel or um x minus one that is why you see green here green here meaning they will cancel out and so we will have e will multiply x minus two so when we come to this side you see e multiplying x minus two then the third one which is this when you multiply this one too by the same lcm that is x minus one times x minus two multiplied by this the x minus two column will cancel the x minus two column that means we'll have b multiplying x minus one so that is how come we actually got this and it is quite simple uh, simple to solve okay so now i'm going back to my original case now that we have this we should be able to solve now how do we solve this partial fraction so if you are looking for a there's a way of doing it if you are looking for b there's a way of doing it now if you are solving for a what you do is that you ask yourself what value of x will make this one zero notice that this is x minus two so what number can i put here so that this side will be zero so if i put two here obviously two minus two will be zero and zero times a will be zero that that is why when we come here we see now x is equal to two it is equal to two because when i put two in place of this x i am going to get zero here so now let's see how we got it so if i place two here uh, and i place two here meaning wherever you see x you are putting two there so if i put two here two plus one will give me three so i have three here then if i also put two here two minus two will give me zero zero times a is zero so it means a is gone then when i put the same two here i will get 2 minus 1 that would be 1 and you know 1 times b is b that is why we say that b is equal to 3 it's as simple as that so now we have determined the value of b now let's determine the value of a how do we do it you come to the b side meaning we have to remove the b how do you remove the b you ask yourself what value of x when you place here will make this whole thing zero so you see if i put one here one minus one will give me zero and zero times b is going to be zero so in the next one to find a you are going to put x is equal to one into this same equation so if i place one here one plus one will give me two and then one minus two that will give us negative a all right and then um one minus one that will be zero so this is zero so remember now i have two here and i have negative a here now i am looking for a so that means a will give me negative um two so now that we have determined the a value and b value we are in wherever we see a we are going to put negative two there and wherever we see b we are going to put the three there 
Now you know mathematically, it is better to always write positive first before the negative. So because the B is positive, when you come to the right hand side, you see that in place of the B, we place 3 there. So we have 3 here. And then the denominator is x minus 2. So we have x minus 2 dx. And then we have the a is minus 2. So it means this one, the whole of this is going to be negative. That's why we see minus. And then in place of the a, we put 2 there. And its denominator is x minus 1. So I have x minus 1 dx. Now you see that it is far easier to actually integrate this using the very first two fundamentals that we laid. And once again, I want to encourage you, if you haven't watched that one, please go and watch. And you see that this is very easy. So let's now quickly integrate this. Now notice that this function is the same as this function. But because it is difficult to actually integrate this, that is why we use the partial fraction to break it down into simpler form so we can easily solve. So now let's go with it. So for a quick reminder for those who are, who are here to watch the first two um, edition, we say that given the integral of 3 over x minus 5, you need to bring the 3 outside the integral sign. So when I factorize the 3, it will be left with 1. So 1 over x minus 5, its standard integration is going to be the natural log of x minus 5. Now the 3 that was factorized is what we see outside here. And of course, this is indefinite integral. So it must come with a constant. So with that, let's now move on and then differentiate this. So how do we go about it? This 3 must come outside the integral sign. So if the 3 comes outside the integral sign, we will get 1 over x minus 2. And the integral of 1 over x minus 2 is going to be the natural log of absolute value x minus 2. And then the 3 that you see here has to come and multiply the natural log. Then this minus is what we see here. Once again, these two must also come outside the integral sign so that we will get one here. And the video that you have watched under part two of the fundamentals of integrating partial fraction tells you that if you have one over x minus one, its integration is going to give you natural log of absolute value x minus 1 and then remember the 2 that was brought outside that is the 2 that we are having here and since we are dealing with indefinite integral you add the plus c to it and so ladies and gentlemen to integrate this using partial fraction going through the steps this is the final answer that we actually get